Chapter four is the first chapter in the book that is going to go into greater depth of one of the specific um, parts of speech. So verbs is our first one. We hew. And I could not resist putting something from Schoolhouse Rock here because anytime I think of the word verb, I have the song in my head. So if you haven't YouTubed uh, Schoolhouse Rock and the grammar, you should. It's such a great time. Look, I'm, I'm assigning you to watch something on the internet. How often do you get that? Well, it may be for children, but that's okay. You might learn something. You never know. So we're going to go into a little more detail about verbs. So the first thing you need to know is that there are two types of verbs. I, um, I let them slip in the last video um, to help you get used to hearing them, but there are two types, action and linking. So when you have an action verb, it expresses oh, an action, go figure, right? Whereas a linking verb is just a state of being or um, it's the senses. So smell in this case is the example I gave you, but the most popular linking verb is the to be verb, which is I am, he is, they are, um, very, very, very common. Uh, and that's obviously not an action, it's a state of being. I am is just a state of being. Okay, so pretty simple to um, remember, I think. You either have action or linking, and you know what actions are, so if you don't think it's an action, more than likely it's just a linking verb. Um, now, do be careful here. You have to, again, look at context. If you said, I smelled the roses, okay, that's not a sense, it's an action. You're actually doing something. Um, but for the most part, I think they're quite um, linear. If you if you can discern that it's an action, you know, it's an action verb. Otherwise, it's a linking verb. Um, all right, moving on. Verb tense. There are three different tenses uh, that verbs can be. Past, present, and future. This should hopefully be... Um, nothing new to you. So in the first example, I walked to the store yesterday. The ED ending signifies it's in the past. I walk to the store daily, present. I will walk to the store tomorrow. Whenever you have um, a future tense, I don't know if it's an always rule, so I'm not going to say that it is, but sometimes, um, often, how about, you will have what is called a helping verb, a helping verb. So I will walk. Will counts as the verb. Okay, so that's your complete verb right there. Helping um, and then the future tense action verb. So I've been, I've been mentioning um, some good information about academic writing. So what is the proper tense for you to use when writing academically? It is the present tense. So if you were writing, say, in your discussion boards about an author, instead of saying, saying she said, she said, she said, she says, S-A-Y-S. Okay, so don't, don't go in the past. You definitely really don't want to work in the future. You want to stay in the present. So-and-so says this. They stated, they state this. So try to stay in the present as much as you can. If you, in your papers, if you're shifting tenses, I'm going to always lean you towards staying in the present tense. It's just, it's, I mean, the past denotes that it's already happened. Um, and yes, when you cite something, say a source in an essay that you're writing, yeah, that person already wrote it, but it's a present conversation that you're having in your writing. So stay in the present. It makes it simple. If you say, hmm, I wonder what tense I should write this paper in, uh, you should write it in the present. And if you see that you've got past tense words, uh, you need to change them to the present tense. It should not be difficult. So verbals, um, these are little tricky guys. They look like verbs, but they're not. They're acting as a different part of speech. But again, they look, they look like verbs and you'll see why they look like verbs. So you've got three types, infinitives, gerunds, and participles. And they, they are relatively easy to spot. With infinitives, your key is the word to in front of it. If you see that word to, don't think, oh, he's going to the store. It's, oh, to have and to hold, which is not a verb. Um, 
sorry, scanning. Okay, that may be a really bad example. I said grammar fun. Grammar's great. Anyway, I've got examples on that next page, so uh, I'm not going to worry about that right now. So again, infinitives, the key is that they have the word to with them. Gerunds act as nouns and they have an ing ending. Do you see why that's confusing? You think, ooh, running, running's a verb. But if you don't look at the context that that word's being used in, you might not realize it's actually acting as a noun. And again, I'll have an example on the next page. The last one is the participles. They either have an ing ending or an ed ending. Okay, one looks like a past tense verb. One looks like an action verb. So here's some examples. The infinitive. I wanted to have pancakes for dinner. Um, the actual verb is wanted, not to have. They're, they're completely different. It's an infinitive. Um, gerund. Running. Running is my favorite hobby. Uh, a good way to tell this, I believe I mentioned it when I talked about nouns, you can replace running with it. So it is my favorite hobby. It's a noun. It is not a verb. You can never replace a verb with it. Uh, so that's the it test. Um, and then the participle, the dog barking all night is my neighbor's. Um, is is the verb. Barking is not the verb. It's a verbal. See how they're tricky? It looks like, oh, somebody's running. Oh, somebody's barking. No, no. They're completely different. So I don't care, again, if you know the different types of verbals and how to spot them and this and that and this and that. All I want you to know is that they exist, that they're out there, that not every word that looks like a verb acts as one. And as you've probably noticed with grammar by now, things get pretty tricky. Things get really complicated. So just keep these in the back of your mind when you're trying to identify a verb. Don't just think, oh, anything with an ing ending is going to be a verb. Not so. Okay, so just keep these in the back of your mind um, in, when you're identifying things in your writing or in somebody else's writing for that matter. So how can you improve through verbs? There are a number of ways, actually. Um, voice. Perhaps you've heard about voice before. Um, stay in the active. It's more, it's more academic and it's more powerful. Active voice says, um, I am going to the store. Right? No. Mm, let me think. Whatever. The, the book has examples. Again, I'm not going to get hung up on this stuff. <laughs> I'm really bad at finding examples on the spot, so that's why I don't tend to do it. Um, stay active. The book will give you examples on what passive is, and it, and it tells you when passive is appropriate, but it says that you need to do so purposefully. So keep that in mind. Otherwise, just stay active. Um, and what um, it, that is related to using strong and weak verbs, action versus linking. Most of the time, I believe, let me look so I don't contradict myself. I want to say that um, most of the time you're passive means you're using a, you're throwing in a linking verb. And uh, if you just use more action verbs, you'll, you'll tend to, uh, uh, I completely over, overwent that. Okay. Um, yes, strong weak. Sorry, just a second. Okay, yes, so I was correct. So, using um, the example from the textbook, um, Ico, however, whatever that name is, I'm afraid I don't know, mowed the lawn. That is active voice. If you say the lawn was mowed by Ico, that's passive. So in the first sentence, mode is an action verb. It's a strong verb. In the second, the lawn was mowed. You have was, which is a linking verb, which is technically a weak verb. So the first two items I have listed here are very much related. If you want to stay active, use strong verbs, which are more of your action verbs. If you want to use passive, do so properly. Uh, obviously, you have to use linking verbs every now and then. Um, if you just use action, that would start to look funny. Just do it consciously. Know what you're doing when you sit down and write a sentence. Don't just vomit on your computer screen. Try to be very, very aware of what you're doing and go slowly. The papers that I'm going to assign this quarter are not going to be particularly long and complicated. The point of this class is to focus on building good sentences and building good paragraphs. 
So the first place to start is your sentences. One of the best places to start within a sentence is your verb. Okay, so choose active and choose strong unless there's a reason, then be passive and use weak verbs. Uh, tense consistency. Uh, we talked about the three tenses. And again, it's most appropriate for you to stay in the present tense. So don't shift to future, don't shift to past. If you're confused about what a, um, if you're trying to use a certain verb and you don't know what it should be in present, use a dictionary. Um, there are resources out there to help you with that. But stay in the present, stay consistent. Otherwise, you're just going to confuse your reader and make a nonsensical sentence. And the last thing is what I've already said, and it's what I'm going to keep saying throughout the quarter. Just be aware. Be aware of what you're doing. Identify your verbs. Look at what, what they are, how you're using them, and look at where you can improve them. Look at the readings that you use in the textbook and see how they use verbs and do it yourself. So yay, there's some more um, in-depth info about verbs. Hopefully nothing too um, brain crashing. As I've said before, don't get stuck on the complicated stuff. Um, if you have any questions, let me know. Otherwise, I expect to see awesome, strong, active verbs. Woohoo! And go watch Schoolhouse Rock. It's a great time. <laughs>